were a child and you were allowed to feel in love, to be excited, to have fun and enjoy life, and then you were just out there expressing yourself to your utmost intention, like the most genuine expression that you can give, you allow yourself to do that. That's what we did when we were children. And then we grew up. Life happened. We started to experience rejections. We started to experience rejections. We started to experience disappointments, heartbreaks. And then the pain, the hurt, we started to feel those things. And then growing up, as we move forward, we'll realize and we feel like we don't want to feel that pain anymore. We don't want to feel that hurt anymore. So what happens is when we experience new situations, we don't allow ourselves to feel fully or to immerse fully in those kinds of situations. It's sad. It's a sad reality. And I feel like we could be able to fully experience what it means to be alive again once we learn how to heal our hearts. Hey guys, it's Alec Cuenca. And in this video, we're going to talk about how to heal your heart. So before we talk about how to heal your heart, there are three principles of healing that you need to remember. The first one is to heal it, you must feel it. You must allow yourself to feel those emotions. I always say this, pain demands to be felt. And that's the same with the other expressions. Joy, peace, happiness, sadness, anger. All of those emotions are demanding you or are requiring you to express themselves. All of, those, all of those emotions require you to feel them. So in any type of healing, the best way or the number one principle that you need to hold on or to remember is that you need to feel them. There's no other way to do it. A lot of people, they try to run away from their feelings, try to run away from their emotions. They sleep for so long. They try to fill themselves with work. They try to do something that will distract them from feeling the emotions that they need to feel. Some people, they want to numb themselves. Some people, they want to numb themselves. They cling on to alcohol, to drugs, to smoking, to try to numb themselves and not feel anything in trying to deal with those emotions. The third way is to feel them, is to just sit through them and feel it. Any kind of emotion, any kind of, whether it's negative or a positive emotion, you need to be able to feel them. That's the only way that you'll get through this. That's the only way that you can heal your heart. The second principle is, if it's hysterical, it's historical. And I learned this from Robin Sharma. And he basically says that if someone or you act in a hysterical way, or people might call it overreacting, then that is a sign or that is a clear indicator that you need to heal something. Triggers will always be there. And for me, once you feel the trigger, once you see the trigger, that provides you an opportunity to heal. The actions of the other people around you, if it pisses you off, it is often the reflection of what you're trying to heal from yourself. So be aware. Look at. Look at yourself. What are the things that you hysterically react to? And what are some triggers that you can notice along the way? The third principle is unexpressed emotion cause unexpressed potential. Ugly emotion, unpleasant emotions, if you try to bury them right now, if you don't allow yourself to feel it, what happens is they come back a few years after, a few months after, and it will become much uglier. So if you want to really better yourself, make better decisions, become a better version of yourself, then you need to heal your heart. Because otherwise, all the pursuit of improving your mind, your body, will be useless. It will become a hollow pursuit. So heal your heart so that you can become a better version of yourself. So what happens if we don't heal our hearts? What happens is we're going to this state of not allowing ourselves to feel any kind of emotions, whether it's a positive emotion or it's a negative or an, uh, an unpleasant, whether it's a pleasant emotion or an unpleasant emotion, we're not allowing ourselves to, to fully experience them. And that sucks because I know a lot of people who are deserving of love and happiness and peace, but they don't allow themselves to feel those kinds of emotions because their hearts are so protected and they have their guards up, they have their walls up. And what happens is they're not allowing anything, any kind of emotion to infiltrate or to enter their hearts. I know you're trying to protect your heart, but most of the time, if we're not careful, then the boundaries that we've set 
are actually hindering us from also experiencing the good emotions, the good parts of our lives. So if we want to experience the best moments in our lives, then we need to also be okay with experiencing the worst experience in our lives. So if we want to fully experience the pleasant emotions, then we also need to be okay with allowing the risk of experiencing negative emotions in our hearts. That makes sense. Okay, now let's talk about the three ways to heal your heart. The first one is awareness. Everything begins with awareness. Any kind of leveling up, any kind of improvement, any kind of change starts with awareness. So if you want to heal something, you can't heal it unless you name it. So you got to be aware, what is that thing? What is that part in your heart that you want to heal? So here's a simple exercise that you can do. Every time you're feeling sad or you're feeling down, you can look at this chart right here. I'm going to put a chart right here and ask yourself, what kind of sad are you feeling? Are you feeling anxious? Are you feeling depressed? Are you feeling lonely? Are you feeling angry? What kind of sad are you feeling? You got to be exact on and very, you got to be very specific on what type of emotion you're feeling because only then can you pinpoint which part of your past do you need to heal from. So when you do that, look at this chart right here. Hopefully I can flash it on your screens and ask yourself, what is the specific emotion that I'm feeling right now? And once you do that, ask yourself, well, where did that come from? What was one memory? What was one specific experience from my past that made me feel that way? And now it is clear, it is clear what you need to move on from or to heal from. You can now learn to express it and then eventually let it go. So that's the first part of healing yourself. How? So that's the first part of healing your heart. Awareness. So that's, so that's the first part of healing your heart. You need to be aware what part are you trying to heal exactly. Also, as I said, pay attention to what triggers you. If you're triggered, then you're given, if you're triggered, then you're given an opportunity to heal. Pay attention to what triggers you because that is a clear indicator of your heart telling you that, hey, do not forget about me. I'm still hurt by that fact. And please, please learn to heal me. Okay? So pay attention to what triggers you. So I want to know, what is one emotion that you're feeling right now? Or what is that one thing that you want to heal from? I want to... So I want to know more about, so I want to know about your answer before we move on to the next parts. I want to know, what are you trying to heal from? Comment down below. What is that one thing that you're trying to heal from? Okay, now let's go on to the second part of how to heal your heart. And the second part is basically expression. As I've said, an emotion demands to be expressed. An emotion demands to be felt. So what you need to do is you allow yourself. Okay, now that you feel inadequate, now that you feel lonely, now that you feel scared, you allow yourself to feel those kinds of emotions. You don't try to resist it. You don't try to fight it. You don't try to avoid it. You allow yourself to feel those kinds of emotions. You just sit through it. You just sit through it. So for example, you're sad. Then allow yourself to be sad, like fully sad. Don't say, well, I shouldn't be sad. I have a lot of work to do, right? You're grieving and it's okay. We always say it's okay to not be okay. Well, this is the point of it. If you're sad, allow yourself to be sad. If you're angry, then allow yourself to be angry because the only time that those emotions will pass if you let yourself experience them fully. Here's the formula for suffering. Suffering equals pain times resistance. Now, pain is a constant in our lives. Pain will always be there. Pain will stick with us until we grow. Pain is something that we can't change. We can't control. But resistance is something that we can. So if we learn how to not resist or to lessen that resistance, then our suffering will gradually decrease as well. So don't try to force yourself to judge yourself or to stop yourself from feeling the way that you're actually feeling. The next thing that you need to do is express it. This is why therapy works so well, because you're allowed to express your emotions. And I know a lot of people that they don't know how to express their emotions, and that's okay. We all need 
to feel safe before we actually share or express our feelings and our emotions. And so I recommend finding someone that makes you feel safe. Whether it's therapy, whether it's counseling, whether it's coaching or mentoring, or whether it's just a friend that you just want to speak to. And the thing about expressing your emotion is you're not trying to fix them. You're not trying to solve them. You're just allowing yourself to feel it. And expressing yourself will be helpful in trying to make your emotions and your feelings more concrete. And in that way, you can now proceed to the third part, which is letting go. Letting go is the final part of how to heal your heart. The emotions that you've compiled, that you've bottled up inside of you, will eventually become scarier and a lot more painful as you try to you know, prolong it. But what I realized that no matter how long you've been holding it, the only way that you can move forward is you let it go. You let it go. You make peace with it. You come in terms with it. That, okay, you existed. I can't change anything about you, but I need to let you go. And here's a lot of misconceptions about letting go. Letting go is simply saying that I accept what happened. Letting go is not forgetting. Letting go is accepting that it really happened and you're ready to move forward with it. You're ready to live. You're ready to allow yourself to live again and to move on, to move through with life, even if that happened. That is letting go. Letting go means that you're not allowing the negative emotions to try to eat you up because of that moment, because of that experience. And letting go... It's more of an inward approach. And one of the best ways that helped me in my journey to heal my heart came from the fact that I learned how to surrender. Surrendering has been very much helpful for me. I realized that there are things that are out of my control and within my control. And the only time that I can focus on the things that I can control is if I let go of the things that I cannot control. The things that I cannot control include other people's emotions, other people's reactions, other people's actions and mindset and words and thoughts and all of those things. I can influence them to change. I can inspire them to change. I can help them in their change, but I cannot change them. So I need to let go of the things that I cannot change so that I can focus on the things that I can change and that will provide a small spark that will start the change that I want to see in my life. So before you go on in your life, and I know it sounds weird, it sounds cheesy to do some kind of ritual letting go. One of the things that I did a few weeks ago is I wrote down things that I wanted to let go on a piece of paper and I burned them on a full moon. And so I felt like anything that I put here, I'm letting it go now. So it needs to be expressed. Letting go needs to be expressed. You write it down, you talk it to a friend, and you say out loud, that I'm letting you go. Because even though you believe that you're letting it go, so it solidifies when you learn how to verbally and express it in a physical manner. So let go of it, okay? So three ways to heal your heart. First is awareness. Second is feel it, express yourself. And third is, of course, let it go. Learn how to surrender. Now, this video may not have talked the entirety of how to heal your heart. I might be doing a webinar about this very, very soon. So keep updated, keep posted. Make sure that you follow me on all my social media platforms so you can get updated on the webinar. But basically, that's all there is. You learn how to learn more about yourself. You allow yourself to feel those kinds of emotions and you let go of them. And that can be the start of you becoming a better version of yourself. The journey towards improving yourself might take some time. I'm telling you, it's going to be worth it. Be patient, be courageous, and have faith that everything that you're doing right now will make sense in the future. So yeah, thank you so much for watching or listening. This is Alec Cuenca, and I hope that you learn how to heal your heart because you deserve happiness, you deserve peace, and you deserve to share your feelings to the world. Till next time. Peace.